Hey, Christopher, you can hear me okay? I gotcha. Awesome, let me get you spotlighted here. All righty, well, we're gonna get right into questions for Christopher. Um, let's kick things off with Chris Estrada. Go ahead, Chris. Chris Trinello, thanks for joining us. Um, as you locked in with the win back in the Daytona Road Course, you've had plenty of time to seek out advice on handling the cup playoffs for the first time. So as you enter the playoffs, what's been the most impactful piece of advice that's kind of stuck in your head? Yeah, so I, I guess the biggest thing would be, you know, coming from Adam Stevens, uh, my crew chief, who's been fortunate enough to win this whole deal twice now. So uh, he's been around the block a couple of times, and he's really smart about knowing where we are at in, in our own specific agenda and how many points that we need over the course of the history of the playoffs, how many points you need per event or per round to advance to the next round. So uh, it's it's been uh, – well, it's going to be a change of pace for sure. So since we won our first race, the second race of the year, uh, we've definitely been focused on trying to win more races and not on the stage points. And I think that that's really impacted our regular season points position. And now focusing into the playoffs, those stage points are going to be crucial for me and my team. So uh, going after more wins in the regular season has now turned into points racing in the playoffs. Thank you. All right, we're going to take our next question from Marty Sakala. Go ahead, Marty. Thanks, Marissa. Seabell, thanks for the time. I'm just curious, of the 10 races we've got coming up, what track are you looking forward to the most? I mean, honestly, the, the first round here at Darlington, Richmond, Bristol is going to be a really, really good round for us, I think. Um, Richmond was a great racetrack, and Darlington were both great racetracks for us early on in the year, and Bristol is one of my favorites on the schedule. So uh, I think between that first round, that's going to be – one round that I really enjoy. Um, and then moving forward, the Charlotte Roval is going to be another one that I look forward to. Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, I think the playoff is, is littered with the racetracks that could be great races for our organization. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. All right. We'll take our next one from Zach Cerniolo. Go ahead, Zach. Christopher, these last three weeks have been three totally different races, but, uh, uh, fair to say, I don't think momentum has been on your team's side the last few weeks. Um, how how does that impact how you enter these playoffs? Uh, does it at all, or is that just kind of wiped away now that there's a clean slate with uh, th with this round of the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, looking over the course of the the last three races, Indy Road Course was uh, you know it relates a little bit to the Charlotte Road Course, but but not tremendously. And then Michigan Daytona are kind of on their own island, so. Uh, they haven't been three good races for us, but I'm not too concerned about it just because the playoff, especially this first round, are completely different style racetracks. Thank you. All right. And our next one will come from Alan Cavana. Go ahead, Alan. Hey, Christopher. I, I know, um, you know, last year not being in the playoff, but did you, as a driver, do you, did you notice anything different competition wise, you know, intensity wise? Was there anything you can take away from last year being around, you know, those playoff drivers uh, as to what to expect? Was there any difference? Yeah, I mean, it was tough because I was a, a non-factor, right? Once the playoffs started, the my, me and my group were pretty much in the background. So it's nice to be able to be a player in this year's outcome, and hopefully we're able to go deep into the, the playoffs. So, uh, you know, we're still racing the same competitors, even though the playoffs have started. I'm sure the intensity will, will ramp up. but you know, it's still the same competitors that you're racing against. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll take our next one from Kenneth Hawkins. Go ahead, Kenneth. How are you doing, Christopher? You mentioned that Bristol is one of your favorite uh, racetracks, but uh, how hard is it to stay out of somebody else's mess or accident at that track? Yeah, it's incredibly tough. And, and Bristol is one of those places that uh, it's about as opposite as you can get from Daytona, Talladega. But ironically, the, the wreck, wreck avoidance is, is really similar. So uh, it's one of my favorite racetracks, but I've had my fair share of getting caught up in incidents. And, and I'm pretty sure that took me out of the race in the uh, fall Bristol too. So, or the fall Bristol last year. So it's a, uh, yeah, it's a really enjoyable racetrack. I've been able to win an Xfinity race there, uh, but I've definitely experienced both sides of it. Thank you. All right. We'll take our next question from Tucker White. Go ahead, Tucker. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Christopher, as we've seen with the uh, high downforce package, uh, especially deep into a run, it becomes a oh, Herculean task to overtake the race leader. So given that, what do you say to people who claim that the package puts 
less emphasis on driver skill and more on random luck? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, I mean, it, you you say it right there, you know, it's higher downforce. So higher downforce is all, or is going to be easier to, to manage. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think what the, the direction that we're heading is, is trying to get all of the bigger racetracks to race like Daytona Talladega. So, um, you know, I, I, I'll let whoever decide if Daytona Talladega is luck or skill and, you know, just know that that's the direction that we're heading. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll take our next one from Nathan Solomon. Go ahead, Nathan. Hey, Christopher. So this is your first time here in the Cup Series playoffs. I'm kind of just curious, how much more of a different field does this have from when you were in the Xfinity playoffs? Yeah, probably really similar as far as the, the overall playoff feel. Um, but unique for me is through the Xfinity and the Truck Series playoffs where I've been a part of in the past I've uh, been on the I guess the favorite side of it or I've been able to accumulate bonus points at least through the regular season and be up on the on top of the leaderboard whereas you know this time around I'm at the very bottom with basically no points so um, you know instead of in the Xfinity series going into the playoffs with the mentality of just don't eliminate yourself now we have to be the aggressor and we have to be focused on doing well and winning points. Thanks. All right, we'll take our next one from Tino, go ahead. Thank you. Hey, Christopher, um, your Joe Gibbs Racing teammates and Denny Hamlin, Martin Trix Jr. and uh, Kyle Busch obviously have a lot of success in the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. So have you talked to them at all about how you can really make the most out of your chances? Yeah, I think, uh, to answer your question, not really, but I have relied a lot on my, my crew chief, Adam Stevens, who's won this this uh, championship twice now with Kyle Busch driving. Um, so Adam knows as well as any of them, for sure. All right, we'll take our next one from Daniel McFadden. Go ahead, Daniel. Hey, Chris. So through, through 26 races this year and also, you know, your first full season last year, what's the most important thing you've learned that you think is going to benefit you going into the playoffs for the first time? Probably that every point counts and, you know, you have to fight for every point throughout, whether it's a stage finish or a race finish. And even if you don't have a great car, taking that 15th or 12th place finish is a lot better than trying to get eighth or ninth with a 12th place car and crashing. So I think the biggest thing that I've learned is that every point really counts. Thank you. All right. And Kenneth, did you have a follow-up? Uh, yes. I wanted to ask uh, Christopher one more question about Bristol. Now that it is in a transfer spot, do you think uh, driving could become more aggressive? Yeah, definitely. I mean, any of these playoff cutoff races, uh, it, it puts the guys that are behind the cutoff line and on the cutoff line in a really vulnerable spot. So uh, I, I expect Bristol to be very wild and, um, definitely a lot of aggression from the guys on the outside looking in. Thank you. All right, Christopher. Well, thank you so much for taking some time with us. We wish you the best of luck in the playoffs. All right. Thank you.